What's up YouTubers? Abroad with the Burrells in the house and today we're gonna be reviewing turkey. So we have been gone a little while. We haven't posted a video in a while for obvious reasons. We've been quite occupied with uh, the little one in there. In April, we did go to Turkey and we would be remiss if we didn't drop a review video for you guys out there that love to travel, giving you the must do's of Turkey and of course the things to look for. Yeah, so when we went, uh, like you said, we were there in April, we went to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. We were there about five nights and then we also took a day trip to Izmir to see the um, ancient city of Ephesus. And then we, from Istanbul, we went to Cappadocia for four nights. We decided to fly Turkish Airlines and we had heard a lot of great things about the airline. So we were really excited to see if it lived up to its hype and it definitely did. So you walk on and everyone's there to greet you, the flight attendants and everything. They actually have an onboard chef. Um, who's there that prepares all the meals, which was really cool. The food was just incredible. Um, every meal we had was delicious. We sit down in our seats and we're getting ready for takeoff. Before we even leave the runway, they come by and they hand you like a hot towel um, just to kind of refresh. We're like, wow. And then they come through with these care packages for each person and we were just blown away. In the care package, there were slippers, socks, little eye masks, toothbrush and toothpaste, um, ear headphones, and you know, just the works, chapstick, everything that you needed to just feel comfortable and you know, so you didn't feel all gross getting off the airplane. We both agree that it was the best flight service we'd ever had on any airline before. So in Istanbul, we stayed in the Fur Hotel. Um, and we did super clean yes yes super nice great, great hotel uh, the people that work there are just amazing Fantastic. um really 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 accommodating istanbul first off is a huge city so there's a lot to do and a lot to see which actually when you go to istanbul the place that you're probably going to want to start in is the area called sultan ahmed mm -hmm. and it's literally like a square or a plaza and all of your major sites are right there within walking distance. The Blue Mosque, the Hagia Sophia, which is adjacent, the Basilica Cistern, which is not too far, and then of course Top Copy Palace, which is not far uh, from there. Well, we did all the major sites, you know, um, the Blue Mosque, which is really, really famous mosque in Turkey. It has six minarets. Minarets. Yeah. Um, we actually didn't get to go in there because it was under construction. <laughs> we could walk in the courtyard, so we did yeah. get to set foot near there. And we also did the Hagia Sophia. Yeah, we went to the Hagia Sophia. I want to say off memory, it was the world's first cathedral style church, really large. Just a wonderful piece of history and absolutely well worth your trip. Yeah. The Top Coffee Palace we yeah. went into, and that was where like all the sult the sultans have lived over the centuries. Mm -hmm. Right, so we are at Top Coffee Palace. About to go inside. Yeah. It was kind of cool to see how they lived. It was in sections. There was like yeah. the concubine palace, and then the king's palace, and then where the dignitaries came and stayed. And they have a wonderful view of the Bosphorus, which is the big uh, river that runs through the mm -hmm. middle of, of Istanbul. So it's definitely worth your time to go there as well. Which brings us to the Bosphorus River. One of the bridges that crosses the Bosphorus is the Galata Bridge, yeah. which nearby is also the Galata Tower. And the Galata Tower was really a wonderful experience because just getting there, you're gonna go off the tourist track just mm -hmm. a little bit. So we ate at a restaurant that was a little off the beaten path. And then we walked from the restaurant to the Galata Tower, which took us through just the neighborhoods of Istanbul. Yeah. We got to see kind of how people live, mm -hmm. walking through past little mosques, you know, yeah. and, and little shops and, and stores and residents. Like mom and pop shops. Yeah, it was nice. Uh, which led us to the Galata Tower, which is placed sort of like in a little courtyard or plaza area, for lack of a better mm -hmm. explanation. 
and it was a lot of great people watching that we were able to do there as well as go to the top of the tower and have some spectacular views. Yeah. Um, after that, we went to the Galata Bridge, which mm -hmm. just every day, just on a daily basis, yeah. filled with fishermen. Yeah. And what happens there is they're fishing, and then whatever they catch, they're selling to the restaurants just below the bridge. So right. you act, you know, walk across the bridge, and you walk down to the water, and there's restaurants where you can get these fish sandwiches. It's not even a restaurant, but it's like a boat. Yeah. Um, where they're actually cooking the fish. Yeah, and these boats are moored right on the docks there, so they're swaying. You know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but you stand in line and you and you order and they give you this great fish sandwich, fresh fish. The fish, obviously, yes, they're clean, but they're not necessarily descaled or filleted. Yeah. So you may get some bones and a little bit of a crunchy texture when you eat and it. When he means may, he means you will yeah. get some bones. There's a lot of locals there, yeah. um, and like families and just yeah. all sorts of people. And you know, locals and tourists alike would get these fish sandwiches and sit yeah. down and just wherever they could and eat their sandwiches. And we're looking around like, are they spitting the bones yeah. out? And like, nope, just they swallowing were putting it them down, And they were delicious. And once we kind of got used to the, what, what, what it was all about, yeah. we really enjoyed it. And I, I'm gonna say, I was um, early on in my pregnancy and so I wasn't quite sure if I'd be able yeah. to really stomach it. And it was like, I took a bite and it was delicious. Yeah, you know, So that says a lot. And along that same little strip um, where you get the fish sandwiches, there's like, and the cement stands, yeah. the nuts that they were roasting yeah. that you could buy, um, that juice, that pickled juice yeah, that they had, delicious. so good. So just a bunch of little stands where you could buy different things and hang out. And just, we barely did anything just sitting there, but it was like one of our favorite days. Favorite days. So, People watching and just kind of enjoying the local life. And the culture, you know. Yeah. So after eating our fish sandwiches, um, we ended up taking a river cruise um, along the Bosphorus and it was really cool because you know as you're going down the river you get like a little historical explanation of everything we're seeing um, mm -hmm. different uh, different mosques and yeah. some palaces and absolutely yeah a lot of little housing residential areas and stuff like that yeah, yeah. so um, a neat thing to do yeah and I think there. we took it in the evening so mm -hmm. it was really kind of cool to see um, the sunset over Istanbul as well is a very unique experience. Yeah. Yeah. We also did the Grand Bazaar. Yes. Um, so the Grand Bazaar is not open on Sundays, which we didn't know. Please mark that. Yeah. Monday, when we we're at the airport ready to fly to Cappadocia, we happened to have a window of about four hours. So we did take a cab back to the Grand Bazaar um, just to kind of walk through, you know, you hear about it. And so we wanted to make sure we got there. Very similar to the Grand Bazaar is the Spice Bazaar, mm -hmm. which is really cool. It's kind of like the Grand Bazaar, that sort of open space market where guys are hawking their wares and, yeah. and kind of trying to get your attention to come into the shop. The difference is the Spice Bazaar, of course, would have your spices there, your food or stuff. Like edible yeah, items. Yeah, dried fruit. Candies. Yeah. Stuff like uh, that. Turkish Delight. Turkish Delight. Which I fell in love with. Yeah, he, yeah. everywhere we went, he Man, had to have Turkish Delight. It was delight. crazy. I just had like a sweetness overload yeah. of that stuff. Yeah, really wow. good. From Istanbul, we took a day trip to Izmir, which is where you'd find the historical site of Ephesus. Yes, we headed south. It was an early morning. I believe we were up at like 3.30 or so. Yeah, you had to fly there. Got to fly there, yes, for the day trip. So we took a plane, flew down to Ephesus for the day, and it was fantastic. Well, Jamie and I, we've been privileged enough to, to go around the world and see some wonderful ruined sites mm -hmm. um, all throughout Europe and other places in the world, down in Mexico and some places in South America. But I gotta say, Ephesus was probably my favorite 
It was amazing. You're just totally immersed in the ruins there. They're so well preserved. Yeah. And they're tucked away in their own mountainous valley area right on the water there, what used to be the water. But it's just amazing to be there. Yeah, and um, we're Christians, so, you know, as Ephesus is mentioned in the Bible, and so it was really special and just amazing to think that you're actually standing there. A lot of historical. Yes. A and high, high, high recommendation mm -hmm. for Ephesus if you're ever in Turkey. So after we finished the Ephesus tour, we had a few hours to kill before our flight back to Istanbul. Uh -huh. And they dropped us in this little port city called Kusadasi. Yeah. Uh, right along the water there and it was a wonderful treat just a hidden gem it was yeah. not on our agenda we had not put it in the itiner itinerary to go to Kusadasi and it ended up being just a fantastic yeah. experience. Lots of little strips of shops and stuff um, kind of felt like a beach town right. you know. A lot of restaurants and wonderful little uh, side streets and alleys to walk through and just kind of enjoy the scenery and it was beautiful, beautiful yeah. town. Yeah. So you could put that on your list. We hadn't had it on there, but we found it by mistake. And right. There were people on the tour with us that were actually headquartered in, in Kusadasi. Kusadasi. Yeah. So some people do know about it. We right. weren't aware of it. That's one of the cool great spot. things about traveling is when you find stuff that you didn't mean to yeah. find. The misadventures sometimes are the best adventures. Yeah. So. After Assemble, we ended up flying to Cappadocia, yeah. um, which we were there for four nights. And Cappadocia is known for all of their cave establishments. Yeah. So a lot of them are converted into hotels now, but it used to be where actual people were living. Yeah. Um, there's just a few families that still live there, but a lot of their buildings are carved, carved out of caves. Yes. And they made it very clear that they're not built in these caves. They are carved, carved out, out of the caves. The caves so. were there first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the caves uh, they're known for Cappadocia and the fairy chimneys. Yes. Um, which are natural, naturally formed rock formations formed by wind and the, whatever the rocks are made of the sediment, the sand yeah. like sediment. When the wind blows, it forms these natural, what they call fairy chimneys. They're incredible. To yeah, see. really yeah. cool. When you go to Cappadocia, there are two major places that you can stay. You can stay in Goreme, mm -hmm. which is where a lot of people stay, and also Urgu. These right. are the two main tourist headquarters. We didn't know before we went. Yeah. We thought Cappadocia is just Cappadocia, and so we ended up staying in Urgu. If we could do it all over again, we would probably stay in Goreme just because it's a little more central. Yeah. Please understand that is not to throw shade on Urgu. We had a wonderful time there. The hotel was great, it was beautiful but Goreme is just a little bit more central. And we actually love, 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 loved our hotel in Ergu. The manager was amazing. And that's what actually drew us to staying in Ergu was that hotel. We had said like, if we could just pick up our hotel yeah. and put it in Goreme, that would have been ideal. While in Cappadocia, we did the open air museum. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of cool to go into the places that had been carved out of the rock and kind of see how, um, Old churches, actually. Yeah, we have a community lived there and they had their churches and stuff that was built. And we did the underground cities, which was fantastic. So Cappadocia is known for this. They have a network, a complex network of underground caves. Tunnels. Tunnels, complete with kitchens and air ventilation I systems. I want to say there is 32 or 36. Underground cities. Yeah, yeah. actual cities. Yeah. Um, the one we went into was actually seven stories Deep. deep so we only went i think to the fourth floor yeah they've been there for centuries and that's where the anatolians the turks they would go underground if ever they were oppressed or if there was a foreign invader they would go there and hide and of course the early church hid under in those caves yeah, quite a bit they would well. stay up to you know three four months yeah. um in there they had you know actual rooms carved out yeah. kitchen area place where they made their wine yeah. um all these different systems in terms of how to communicate. Right. It was really, really cool yeah. to see that. Yeah, do, definitely do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're claustrophobic, you might want to think twice. Yeah. Because some areas get a little tight when you go down and you're underground and people have been known to get uncomfortable and, and feel like they need to get out immediately. Yeah. We also did the hot air balloon ride. Yeah. In Cappadocia. 
Cappadocia is um, one of the places in the world that's actually really well known for their hot air balloon rides. Yes. And the day we went up in the sky, there were actually like 150 other balloons yeah. up there. So another early morning, just like Ephesus. Yeah, we were up at 4.30 in the morning to catch the hot air balloon. It was, it was not light outside when we uh, arrived and there you can see them firing up the balloons so you start early and some sweeping views you get great views yeah. when these things go up way high and then sometimes they drop it low like just in the to valleys. skim the mountains so they give you a nice ride and of yeah. course the obligatory how long have you been flying and of course you get the obligatory answer it's my first time yeah it's my first time <laughs> How long have you been flying? This is my first day. First flight. I knew I knew that joke was coming. I knew it. I knew it was coming. <laughs> but um yeah, a really, really great experience. And they end with yeah. like a little champagne toast, like yeah. champagne. Yeah. So that's actually on my bucket list. So check. While in Cappadocia, we also did a Turkish night. Oh, must um, do. Which I, yeah. you could do those in, you know, Istanbul and other places, but we were saving it for Cappadocia. Yeah. And our hotel manager actually recommended one for us and it turned out to be amazing. Basically you go in and it's like a dinner. It was like open bar and everything and you could have a choice of meals, a ton of food and they put on a show, you know, right. very traditional Turkish dancing, belly dancing. Yeah, um, traditional Turkish musicians, mm -hmm. just all types of wonderful uh, traditional performance and even the venue itself is great. Really cool though, you should definitely do a Turkish night. Yeah. So Cappadocia, they're like famous for their pottery and they make all sorts of different things, you know, from dishes to just decor. I actually had the opportunity to use like a clay wheel to mm -hmm. form my own pottery. Not as easy as it looks. Um, <laughs> don't let the movie Ghost fool you. Um, but, you know, it was cool to be able to do that. Um, so you should try to do it if you can. There's different shops you can go to that allow you to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely recommend that as well. Absolutely. Must do's. Okay, so let's rewind back to Istanbul for a second. Must do's in Istanbul. Number one, I would say, is your top like Blue Mosque, Hagia Sophia. Those two, I would say, are must do's. The Galata Bridge. Yeah. Definitely go get some food in that area, eat, get a sandwich, people watch. Top Copy Palace was really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, such a grand place to be. I would recommend that being a must do as well. The Grand Bazaar and Spice Bazaar, I wouldn't, I mean, Grand Bazaar, you hear about it, so it's I mean, go you gotta, ahead, you go, gotta see go. it, you gotta lay eyes on you it. You gotta, you gotta step foot in it, but in terms of really shopping and stuff, I was like set, like, we're gonna spend a whole day shopping, and a lot of the shops are the same thing you see throughout the, the rest of Istanbul. Yeah, yeah. so. They have a lot of street curbside shops and stuff, and outdoor markets, and honestly, the things in the outdoor markets were the same things that they were selling in the Grand Bazaar. Yeah, so in terms of shopping, I wouldn't say yeah. it's something that you gotta go and buy this and that, but just for- To see it? Yeah. Yeah. Another must do that we actually didn't get to do is a Turkish bath. Yeah. We were told time and time again, like you have to do a Turkish bath, have to do a Turkish bath. We even made appointments, we rushed over there. All right, so we are going for what they call a hammam, which is a Turkish bath. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this Get goes. Get scrubbed down. So we look forward to doing it if we can actually find the place. <laughs> so we've been traipsing around Turkey trying to find the hammam, the hammami. And uh, there it is. Oh, we got it. Got in, they said, oh, sorry, you're pregnant. You can't do it. Huge disappointment. We were yeah. really bummed out about it. But what can you do? You yeah. Know? Another must do in Istanbul. We have to give a shout out to this restaurant. Yes. It's called the Old Ottoman. You have to go there. And they serve like a traditional pottery kebab. They literally bring out a clay pot where the beef has been cooking in there, in this marinating, in this wonderful... Like enclosed yes, pottery. Yes, like an enclosed clay pot filled with all the spices and the herbs and everything. And they bring that out to you and it's sitting on a fire, on a flame. Yeah. 
they take the pot and they crack it open for you and out spills this glorious steaming pile of greatness <laughs> and they pour it on your plate and it's just a great traditional Turkish meal. At the old Ottoman, it was our favorite meal of the whole yeah. entire trip. Errol's the guy that owns the, the restaurant. Yes. Super, super nice. A dessert on the house. All He was just yeah. really engaging and we got a separate meal as well and that was yeah. really good. Everything was just yeah. top notch. And, so. and, and Errol, not just Errol, but the entire staff. Yeah. Everybody in there was extremely friendly. All Always making sure that you had what you need and the service was second to none. Shout out to them and you should definitely go there yep. when in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Ephesus is a must do for me, especially for us, especially if you love history and just if you appreciate architecture and culture. Yeah. In Cappadocia, hot air balloon. Yes. Do not go to Cappadocia and not do the hot air balloon. I repeat, do not go to Cappadocia <laughs> and not do the hot air balloon. That's kind of what it's known for. That's iconic. You got to do it. People are going there just to have wedding photos taken with the balloons in the background. Right. Um, another must do, I'd say the underground cities. Yep. That was quite an experience. You know, again, I'd say guided tour because otherwise, at our, left to our own devices, we would not have known what. Right. Right, room we was at, yeah, yeah what we we're looking at you know right. we did want to mention too that turkey is very cheap in terms of what yes. things cost uh, the u.s dollar is very strong there mm -hmm. at least right now our money went a long way so that was definitely a pro of right. the trip it's almost a must do and a what to look for i'd say if you're gonna go if you're gonna be in turkey go to a rug shop and enjoy the experience of being shown these great Turkish rugs yeah. because they are beautiful they are gorgeous and they're worth it but just be aware that they do cost they're not cheap you're gonna pay for them and the people that run the shop they are going to be very persuasive what's what I'm looking for uh, relentless in yeah. their sales tactics to kind of get you to buy yeah. something so if you know that ahead of time you go into the shop looking to spend money and buy a Turkish rug you'll be fine if you're kind of on the fence just be aware they're gonna do everything they can to get you to buy. Be aware of taxi drivers. They can be dishonest. Uh, we had a particular situation where we agreed on a price, uh, 50 Turkish lira to take us from the airport to the Grand Bazaar. And so he was like, yes, 50 lira, good to go. I'll take you to the Grand Bazaar. So we're driving and then the minute his meter hit 50 lira, he actually pulls over and says, it's right here. If you just turn this corner, you'll see the Grand Bazaar right there, just a few blocks, just a few steps away. We say, okay, we pay him 50 lira. We get out, turn the corner, there's no Grand Bazaar. We ended up having to ask too many, people. too many people how to get there. We're twisting and turning and getting lost. We ended up walking several more miles before we actually reached yeah. the Grand Bazaar. So just be aware. Um, but as long as he got his 50 lira. Yeah, he lira, got his 50 lira, you know? so he was happy. If you go yeah. into a store, they're basically expecting you to buy they're something. They're very pushy. And I mean, that has been that was our experience like the entire trip. And that's not to say that everywhere you go is like that, because maybe it's not. But that was like every single place we went, that was our mm -hmm. experience. Yes. If you exchange eye contact with yeah. someone and exchange a word of greeting, they're gonna jump on you like a vulture. Yeah. So if you don't mind that sort of thing and you're used to that, then you'll be fine. You're gonna love the haggling experience. If you think it's like here in the US where you walk into a place, you window shop, they give you space. Uh, they say, hey, I'm here if you need help. And then they kind of back off of you. That is not no. Turkey at all. Not. They hover <laughs> as you walk through the store. They hover and they want you to buy everything. And some of them can be very rude if you don't want to purchase. We had guys that they didn't speak very good English, right? And so we're kind of trying to negotiate a price. But then if we don't agree to the price, all of a sudden their English gets very fluent when they decide to cuss you out. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in Sultan Ahmed or around the Istanbul area, if a random person comes up and talks to you yeah. and they're very nice and very friendly, be aware and be cognizant that there's usually an angle. There's there, usually there's they're a trying, motive. There's a motive. It. They're trying to sell you something. And we've been to a lot of countries and we meet people, random people. And we've, we've experienced where people are genuinely nice and they just genuinely want to show you the best parts of their city or their country or wherever you are. We're very open and friendly to yeah. people. And because of that, we've met some great people around the world. We've met great friends and we've ended up being able to experience things that you wouldn't normally be able to experience. For instance, when we were in Cappadocia, we met a family from Argentina. 
What's up, guys? I'm the best. <laughs> I am the best. <laughs> Shout out to you guys, because you guys are the homies. They were so dope. They taught us a traditional Argentinian tea drink. It's called uh, Yerba Mate. And they take this tea and they put it in this cup and it's super hot and super hot. Super hot. And you drink it through the straw and like you gotta keep drinking it until you hear that slurpy sound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you pass it to the person next to you and then they fill it up again and brew it in there and they drink it and it was just really cool. But shout out to our Argentinian friends. Uh, you for, know who you are. Yeah, you know who you are. And Istanbul is a little bit different. Yeah. If a random person came and talked to you and they seemed extra helpful or extra nice, there's usually an angle. They're trying to get you into their shop so that you can buy something or they're trying to direct you to a place where they can extract money from your pocket. Yeah. Because be, we're very aware of that. We had a situation where a gentleman walked up to us and he's like, hey, I know you guys. I, I work at the front desk in your hotel. And we're thinking, really? We don't really recognize yeah. this guy. It's a big hotel. Maybe, maybe he works with us. And we're like, okay. He's like, hey, you guys going to dinner tonight? We're like, yeah. He's like, hey, go to this place. It's it's great and it's cheap and yada, yada, yada. Real authentic Turkish Real food. authentic Turkish food. It's the best ever. You're going to love it. And we're like, okay. And we had in our minds to go to a completely different spot. We're like, okay, well, I guess we'll give it a try. And then, of course, we go there and sit down. Just so happens there's a couple from Chicago sitting next to us, a family from Chicago. And come to find out, they were staying in a completely different hotel. But the same guy had approached them and pointed them to the same restaurant. And about 30 minutes of the meal, that same guy walks into the back door of that restaurant because he works there. Yeah. And so it's just those types of things that you run into. So that pretty much wraps up our review um, on Turkey, the good, the bad, the things to look out for. Yeah. Hopefully we can provide you some things from our perspective that will give you a smoother trip and help you to avoid some pitfalls. Yep. If you want to watch the actual video of our vacation to Turkey, please click the link here. Please subscribe here. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll do it for the Burrells. Please remember, hit the road, get out there. Make it happen Make and it happen. have fun. Have fun. Bye. Peace. And so they dropped us in this part of Turkey called Kasadusi. Um, Kusadusi. <laughs> Kasadusi. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Want me to do it? Yeah. All right. And they had us, uh, they dropped us in a city. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Struggling. All right, I got it.